Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in and watching this video. Today I'd like to share a few slides and a few demos about tool that recently I found really interesting. It's called Data Build Tool or usually referred to as DBT. And in this presentation you will see how Data Build Tool can be used with Databricks, with Delta Lake, with, within Azure ecosystem using Azure Data Lake as uh, storage, and last but not least, using Azure DevOps as a deployment. And now, what makes DBT, in my view, quite special and simple tool? So first of all, I'm a big fan of, of this nice, high quality engineering. And the moment I see videos like this, it's just a uh, hypnotic engineering that I absolutely love. To make this happen, there are a couple of components that need to play together really, really well. You have tools, you have processes, you have people. People define the algorithms, processes, these actual algorithms later control the tools, high quality, high precision uh, tools, and you end up with having this unique uh, product. And now, if something is missing, for example, processes or people, you end up in a situation more or less like this. Tihomir, je li ti se sviđa mašina? Ja znaš ti s tim radit? Ajde da vam pokaži. Bravo! Bravo! Dobro, dobro, pregrijat će. Ok, ok, it will overheat. So, I'd like to talk a bit about why dbt makes it special and thanks to dbt you might end up with an experience having closer to the first video than uh, than this one so coming back to our our three components tools process and people when it comes to it comes to people i really like this article by jeff magnuson where he expressed that engineers shouldn't buy detail and basically this is an experience that if you have uh, data analysts, data scientists, or data engineers, they all should be responsible for all the aspects within the data pipelines. But then in the tool, that's where I would like to show my initial thoughts about dbt, why it makes uh, things quite simple and special. And last but not least, process. Uh, we have a brilliant data ops manifesto built on Agile uh, manifesto that contains a few uh, aspects that would be hardly achievable with other tools, UI-based tools, for example, Azure Data Factory. And if we look in uh, these specific examples, you have statements like analytics as code, of course, then it's, uh, you can source control that and you can have a proper uh, engineering governance around that. Orchestration, making it reproducible highly relevant for uh, critical systems. Disposable environments, being able to quickly spin up environments for quick exploration. Simplicity, analytics, is manufacturing, etc., etc. And I highly encourage you visiting this dataopsmanifesto.org, looking at more principles. But some of these are core key elements why dbt uh, came into my, my site in the first place. So what is dbt? dbt expresses or presents themselves as t in the ETL process. So you have extract, load, and transform. Uh, e -E -L uh, ELT, in this case, you have extract, load, and transform. And dbt specializes just in t. What it does create, it's the transformation process. As you see in the diagram, data has to be already in raw, then dbt transforms the data has different connectors and the default connectors are going to BigQuery, uh, Snowflake, Redshift, uh, Postgre. Uh, but as you will see, there are more 
connectors available and on in the roadmap. And what it DBT does, it transforms the data. But to understand better the ecosystem where that would fit in our Azure architecture, let's take a look at this, this picture. What happens first, we load data to some kind of landing storage with either Azure Data Factory or another tool. In step number two, then data gets transformed into Delta format to our bronze tables, bronze zone. And step number three, that's where data gets enriched, transformed, cleaned, uh, moved to silver and later to gold. And last but not least, step number four, that's where data gets moved into serving layers. Where DBT falls into, in my view, that's step number three. That's where DBT can make quite a big difference. Here is another take, another view of, of that uh, diagram, a bit more detailed. Uh, step one, uh, step one, data ingestion, different patterns. In step number two, that's where data breaks. It could help you a bit with autoloader copy into uh, just to put data inside the managed tables. And then step number three. And in this context, we will use uh, DBT and in, in, in this demo. Now a bit data zone, what's the difference between bronze, silver and gold? In bronze, it's a, a more landing raw zone, uh, data coming as is, uh, not transformed. In silver, we are getting, uh, preparing this a bit, maybe applying some GDPR filtering, consent filtering, initially blending, initially aggregating that, uh, building history. And in gold, uh, here are our golden data sets. Depending on the use case, those, those might be analytical base tables for your machine learning feature marts, uh, or just uh, the data warehouse uh, dimensions and facts. And where the data pipeline comes into picture is basically movement through all these zones. And to ensure our data pipelines of high quality, uh, they are of, of reproducible and the one that we could trust, we need to look at the aspects of uh, how to test that, how to ensure data quality, but how, how to have unit testing, integration testing, CI, CD, lineage, documentation. So these are very important components for all data pipelines. And now in DPT, DBT, uh, how they represent themselves, they, uh, if we look from the raw data, then you have snapshot. Snapshot would help you with building history, having slowly changing dimensions. Transformation parts using SQL, you could change the way, uh, basically you transform data. Testing, uh, you get ability to have control over schema and uh, having custom tests using SQL. Deployment part and documentation part where you get this nice, uh, very simple website, uh, data catalogish website with lineage that I'll show you as well. In addition, with version control, you can keep all your scripts in Azure DevOps, uh, alerting, logging. This is not coming by default in open source part, uh, but you will see what are different deployment uh, possibilities within DBT. So DBT has a couple of versions. Uh, the one is called DBT Cloud, DBT uh, Hosted Environment, which is paid. There are different plans that I'm just showing you here. But in the context of this demo, you will see open source Python package that I just installed from pip. And I'm using this locally, and then I'll be using this uh, against targeting my Databricks and then you deploying that in Azure DevOps. But in this demo, is just an open source. I'm not touching the commercial part. So as I mentioned, there are a couple of mm, adapters that uh, are managed by DBT, mm, by Fishtown Analytics, company behind DBT. Uh, but as well, uh, in our example, I'll be using open source adapter that is also developed by the team behind DBT and Soon, as you will see, soon this will be uh, fully supported. But that's the component that I installed in addition. And in this example, uh, I'm using Jaffle Shop uh, 
fictionalness uh, at Comrades Shop that as well you can access in the link uh, that I provide here. What we'll have there, we have a few tables, customers, orders and payments and we'll be using, doing aggregations on top of it. So now it's time for the, I'd say, the, uh, the best part of just taking a look at Visual Studio Code or the actual DBT code uh, that I have locally. We'll be looking how it runs against Databricks, what we get inside there, and then a small demo how how my Azure DevOps pipeline looks like. So without any further ado, let's jump further into the demo. Here is my Visual Studio code. And what I have, one of the core components inside every dbd project, it's called dbd project yaml file. That's the configuration file that we specify. So we have name, we have version, config, and profile. This is where I need to stop a bit and explain how dbt handles connection strings. So what it does, it does look up on your profile YAML file, which is hosted usually not on your repo, but in your uh, local file, uh, file system somewhere else. Uh, since I don't want to show you my secrets, I'll just show you example how this look like, looks like. So in this case, I want to look up my Azure Databricks workspace HTTP. And the profile files would look like this, would have the same key. We have target, which um, basically points, which is the default environment without, if you don't specify anything, what will be executed. And here we specify that our dev environment, that's type Spark, we are using HTTP. We need to specify what's our host, uh, our organization, uh, that pretty much it's, it's the same as, as the beginning of, of host after latest URL changes in Azure Databricks. Token. What is the default schema that dbt will be using while deploying your tables and cluster name? So this example is with HTTP, but also of another approach you can use with ODBC. So the differences you would need to make is this method and driver. But for the demo now, I'm using HTTP version. <coughs> So what we would like to execute at the very beginning with dbt. Uh, in addition, maybe I'll just go through the projects that he, uh, we have here. Uh, there is a set of projects that dbt provides you by default. One is called analysis, where you just can source control your queries uh, for ad hoc analysis. The data site, um, that's where you can put your data files if you would like to version control them, but that's not a best practice to keep all your data inside this Git control because obviously your Git repo would uh, just explode. But here are just maybe some lookup tables that you would like to use um, or just data that you use during development. So that's the case in, in, in my scenario. I'm using these three small CSV files as just source. Uh, what we have there, we have a folder called macros that I'll be not diving into details in this video, but you, you can create templates uh, that dbt is, is famous of, of running SQL combined with macros to help you basically uh, execute similar things without uh, duplicating your code. And the, in my view, the most interesting part uh, for this demo is the part called models. And here I have already a few models created. So my first model is just a simple file where uh, SQL file, where I'm specifying that my model is nothing else but this static table, basically this static query. And what I want to uh, say that during each execution, please materialize this query as a table and please use this location route inside my data lake that's already mounted storage to store the data. And pretty much that's it. Uh, you are specifying how this model, which is called my first DPT model, will be materialized at the end of the day. 
if I look at my second dbt model, here we see something uh, a bit different. We uh, specialize that now, please reference my first model. So instead of hard coding model name, uh, you are just specifying uh, or building dependency on top of my first model. And in this case, materialization will be a view. So data does not get persistent. And in fact, this statement is, is no longer needed. So what I want to show you now, if we jump to our Databricks, we have uh, a, few, a few tables that we have uh, or a few databases. We have default and default seed and default seed contains our raw data, raw customers, raw orders, raw payments that are already populated from my data folder. But now I would like to deploy my, my example models. And one thing to mention, there was so-called schema in my profile. And I specified this as def dbt data prick. So this schema will be used as a database in, inside my data bricks, uh, inside my Hive Metastore, where my all tables will be, uh, will be deployed. So now let me run dbt debug, just to check if all the connections, everything is, is fine with, with my, my local setup. I have profiles, I have dbt project, the connection is okay. Okay, that's, that's great. What we do now, let's just run dbt run and what will happen? It will uh, go through all the models that we have locally. Or in this case, I'm, I'm running too much. I've realized I should be running just my example model for now. which is actually only this folder. Uh, and let's take a look what happens. Okay, okay. Now let's go back to Databricks. Let's refresh. And here we have, we have our, um, we have our model inside uh, Databricks, which if we, if we query this one, you see, we have some sample data that we already inserted uh, from uh, this static query. And here is my second dbt model, which is actually is coming as a, uh, just as a view on top of it. But what I want to run in addition, I want to run not only tests, uh, run, but also let's execute tests on top of it. And here is one failure. I wonder what's, what is it, what, what happened? And it specified that failure in test not null, my first dbt model. And to understand what happened, I need to go back to my example. I open my schema and I see that uh, not null. Here is one test and for ID, much this, uh, this test, was not executed successfully. So the reason behind that is if I go to my first model, here is one of the entries uh, in ID contains just no value. I, I know that's a very stupid, simple example, but it'll visualize the case. So I'm just changing to three. I want to rerun this one. Or we just, uh, we are just refreshing uh, our tables with, with new values. So dbt contains as well uh, the schema management, but the uh, works as just transformation engine and we have new values and now we need to run test. And here it is, all the tables are deployed now and we are happy to have uh, Uh, all our data stored locally. Now, let's take something a bit more complex. And for this more complex environment, I have this uh, example with customers' orders and payments, where if we just uh, will look into a few examples, 
staging part it just contains of creating staging tables then we have staging orders uh, staging payments and on top we'll be creating dimension for, for customers as well storing this in data lake uh, and having simple facts uh, table so what i'd like to run in, in at the beginning i'd like to just seed my tables and what C does actually it populates our data uh, in in databricks uh, that that we already get data in in proper form and I'm happy already to see that. Let me just verify. Yes, we have dev dbt databricks seat where we have our raw tables. And now we could run dbt run. And we can specify uh, that. Or maybe in this case, let's run everything will be easier. So all other my tables uh, now will get executed. In, in Databricks. So in addition to our examples tables, now we have way more uh, upcoming. We have five out of 10 and soon we'll receive everything inside, inside Databricks. And here we are approaching our last command. So if I just refresh my Hive Metastore, I look at DevDBT Databricks, and now I have my tables. So in addition to example tables, here we have staging tables, we have dimension facts tables already deployed in Databricks, and this is managed by, by DBT, by the models built in DBT. If I just open one of those, uh, we'll see what, what we have. We already have transformed data uh, by using the logic inside one of the models. Uh, but for this, I will leave you for your own exploration, um, looking what are those different strange macros inside SQL uh, and how that works. But now, uh, just a few words why I think the setup with DBT is quite interesting and what makes it as, as a really uh, superb tool. So as you noticed, with DBT, we are deploying changes to our, in this case, development environment. We could have another environment which we specify, for example, as test. Here we might be pointing to another workspace or just changing the schema name and just getting test environment up, up and ready. However, another point that I love about dbt is the docs uh, uh, generation part. What it does, it goes through all the models, all the documentation, all the executed tests, and we're just building our data catalog. And this data catalog is nothing else, but you have this folder called target and in this folder there is a file called catalog json and a few additional files where dbt keeps all its metadata inside so we need to wait a bit until dbt runs through all the the models that we have uh, it already produced our data catalog and now i'd like to preview this locally And here we are. This is a simple documentation running uh, on, on my local host. We go to models, we go to Mars, for example, already deployed. We just open facts orders and we see uh, basic information that is coming from dbt that we already specified in our uh, SQL files and in our uh, dbt project in Visual Studio Code. So. Here are our columns. Uh, you see already some tests were executed, some description, what is the type. Yeah, a bit more information about what tests, uh, if you would like to preview. But the part that is interesting is here. Uh, for me, that I'd like to show is, this is the source code that you saw a bit earlier. 
this dbt specific and here you can switch to see how the compiled version look like and the compiled version it's it's this so it's it's not a magic key you will uh, see what was the actual sql uh, targeting the databricks if for example your target database or compute is different if it's synapse if it's bigquery uh, your sql compiled sql might look differently now as we are in fact orders there is another button that i'd like to show you and it's called lineage graph and the lineage graph consists of the whole journey of what was happening with with our model uh, we can jump to raw payment side, staging, uh, aggregated payments, same goes here. Quite simple and quite neat lineage. So if we jump then back to our DPT, all that you saw is inside our target folder. Uh, here is the catalog JSON that I mentioned to you earlier, and here is our run uh, executed uh, run information. And if I go inside my models, I go into example. So here is the SQL generated by Databricks in, in case you would like to take this code and execute by yourself inside uh, Databricks. Uh, but the part that we can switch into now is the Azure build pipeline and that's where uh, that's the pipeline that i'm using to deploy my changes uh, nothing fancy is is here but rather there are a few tasks that i'd like to to go through so first task is related to securing uh, to the downloading um, our profiles that uh, there is a specific profiles a yaml file that i've already uploaded i'll show you the place where i did that uh, next, we are just installing our Python. Following another step, we are just making sure the profiles actually get, uh, get downloaded locally from Azure DevOps. Uh, installing a few prerequisites that dbt requires on our um, Linux uh, Ubuntu machine. And here uh, I'm installing dbt, I'm installing dbt spark component, which is as of today, that's not a part of dbt package itself and running compile, seed, run, test, docs, generate the, the uh, similar commands that I've been running locally. And now we'd like to jump uh, into our pipeline to look how that looks. So here's my, my Azure DevOps, I'm inside pipelines. And here we have our Azure Databricks demo uh, pipeline. If we go inside, there were a few cases where already uh, was failing something, uh, maybe some tests or just setup was wrong. Uh, but uh, let's take a look at this successful execution. And here we have uh, some initial uh, jobs, uh, here we are just checking, uh, switching to Python uh, version that we would like to use. We are installing profile, uh, getting profile from Azure artifacts, installing Linux packages, just getting uh, dbt uh, in place. And if we then scroll down, you will see all the changes and all the uh, tests that that were running in this case plenty of things already failed uh, and then i had to rerun that and then last but not least pushing target to git and you might ask why do you need this type of of trick so as you remember in our visual studio code what i've been doing I've been generating docs uh, locally to be served. But as a last step, what I did, I said that in addition, after building your pipeline in Azure DevOps, I'd like to have the latest docs generated and pushed to my a separate Git branch. So in that case, I'm, I have a separate branch that I call target. Here's my Git repo. Here's master branch with all the files that you saw so far. And here I have orphaned branch which contains only target information uh, about the latest run 
So a small trick to, to have always the latest documentation in, in Git. What else? When it comes to demo, I think we are almost done. So a few things uh, for ending. The example you saw today is available on my, my GitHub that you can access. Um, it's a public, public repo. And the inspiration for this talk uh, was coming from, uh, from initially th this talk about the future of data engineering, that instead of jumping uh, and thinking about decentralization, first we need to make sure that we are running uh, foundations correct. So what I've been showing for you with dbt was only the, the first part related to batch execution. But it's, in my view, that's quite critical to get uh, not only batch, but all the DevOps part and, and testing around that correct. And I encourage you to looking uh, this video, DBT using Databricks and Delta uh, by Foco on, on Spark Summit and recently as well, he wrote a brilliant blog post how you can set this up uh, quite quickly uh, locally. So highly encourage. Thank you for connecting and watching this small demo of DBT. I hope you found something interesting and now you will look at your uh, Databricks and, and Metastore, maybe with different perspective and having in mind that even software engineers coming from another field, they could use a tool that is quite simple, but that could enable unit testing, integration testing, but as well simplify deployment at the end of the day without the need of using uh, only UI-based ETL tools. So thank you for watching. Um, please share your thoughts, uh, ping me on LinkedIn or an email. And yeah, thanks for now. Bye.